Okay, so we're going to go through the Retracker High Precision Calibrator. And to start main page, you have some options. If you have an existing lens file, if you want to save your project for use later, if you want to load a project, you do it here. Otherwise, we're going to go to Input Data, and we'll start with the project frame rate. My camera's coming in at 24. Uh, if you have your tracking delay, you would put it here. There are ways to get that uh, or figure it out. We typically do it in Unreal Engine. Uh, Axiometry has a tool to figure it out. Uh, lens data. I have a DZO 20 to 55. And uh, then you're gonna need to know your sensor size. This is just a description, of course. Uh, but your sensor size, uh, there are several places to get it online, um, manufacturer website, etc. for your specific camera. Uh, I have a Blackmagic 12K, it's 25.344 by 14.256. Uh, then your focus information. Now I only have, um, I don't have my Fizz connected at the moment, but if I did, I would be able to uh, actually link into that and then based on having calibrated that already. And when I turn the focus ring, it would input this information into this system automatically, but I'm gonna do it manually here. So mine is currently set to 20 millimeters. And um, likewise for the, sorry, that was for zoom obviously. And then for focus, also gonna put it in manually. Right now I'm set to, this is in millimeters and set to about 1.6 meters. Uh, and then I'm at a 5.6. So that's the uh, basic info coming in. And then live link. Um, first of all, I will show you here. So in the setup, you're going to want to enable live link bliss, although you could use 3D. Uh, secondly, enable track, uh, sorry, tag tracking. And that is, of course, for the April tag. And um, once that's done and you run your Bliss software, uh, you can see here my camera is actually already pointed at the April tag, so it shows a one here, but it's also shown up here uh, in the software. So it sees camera one, which is what the the camera, the live link, or sorry, the uh, Bliss was set to, and the uh, camera 101 is actually looking at the um, April tag. Uh, but even though it sees it here, we're going to need to come down and assign it. So we're going to say camera 101. So it sees the two inputs, but it doesn't know what's what. So here we're going to say that the camera is camera 1 and the April tag is 101. So that way the software knows which to use. Um, next is media, and you can see it pretty much automatically already saw my feed, but uh, I'm coming in at 1920 by 1080. Uh, I have an SDI source, and it saw that uh, my first one is the, uh, I have a Blackmagic um, 8K uh, capture card. So it looked at this first one and it was there, but had I something else, I could choose it here. Uh, if I had HDMI coming in or an NDI or whatever, uh, this is where you would set that. This is where you open it. If you want to close the feed for some reason, you do that. Um, once we have media, we're going to go into the camera calibration. So uh, we don't start with this. We're gonna we're gonna get to that. We come down here. First of all, I'm gonna do enable coverage map because that way I can see where I'm capturing the information. Um, the first thing I do is actually this calibration board, and you want to put in the number of rows and columns. Now remember that. What we're looking at are the vertices here, not the number of squares, but the number of vertices. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight columns. And one, two, three, four, five rows. So five by eight. And mine is on this one, um, 6.25 centimeters. Yours will be whatever yours is for your checkerboard. Once I have that, I can start capturing. So basically all I need to do is click here. And 
you can see this is the cover uh, the coverage map and so the goal is to get these lines covering as much of this as possible now this is a little squeeze because the feed even though it's 16.9 is coming into this window which is not 16 by 9 um, so ignore that that is squeezed like that so next step is basically going to be to move the camera around and or move the checkerboard and you're going to want to get it at different angles you want to get it at different um, distances uh, basically, uh, you want to cover this with as many different variations as possible, not going overboard like, you know, 12,000 separate hits, but you'll see. And you want to have some overlap. That's probably a little more than necessary, but... And you can get it right up to the edge, but don't go over. And sometimes it won't work uh, for whatever reason. Maybe the lighting is a little off. If there are reflections on the checkerboard, sometimes it has problems seeing it. If it's at too oblique an angle, it might be a problem. But uh, you can see I can have part of this square covered, but as long as the vertex uh, here is showing, vertex is uh, there, you can um, capture the data. So just literally clicking on the screen here. So that's the first pass, and now I'm going to actually move the checkerboard. I'm going to put it a little closer because it works a little better if you include some, uh, some close-ups. I'm also going to change the angle a little bit. Okay, and that gives me a pretty good coverage. Um, at that point, we're going to simply do add to lens distortion. And we'll notice here, when we click on that, and it calculates, there's my lens distortion, there's my um, calculated field of view, or focal length in my field of view. And um, that is pretty much how we do the distortion. Now that we have the distortion, we can calculate the nodal offset. We have to have the distortion first. So here, uh, we're gonna, well, change what's on the screen. Okay, so there's my April tag. Um, now, it's possible, uh, a couple of things here. First of all, we're going to come down here to the information about the April tag. And um, the one that I'm using that we typically use is this April tag uh, 36H11. So make sure that's chosen, but there are other possibilities. But make sure of that. Also, we're using tag ID number one. There's a whole library of, you know, slightly different ones. And uh, you have to have your tag size correct. So mine is 17.25 17 centimeters. And then if I click on generate, it's going to make it the correct size. So what's happening here is that my bliss is seeing it here. Uh, this is generated based on what the bliss is seeing, but giving positional information. And this is what obviously we're seeing optically. And so comparing those at multiple different distances and angles is what allows the calculation of the nodal offset of the bliss to the camera's nodal point, the, the lens's nodal point. And so 
similar to what we just did and just double checking that they look alike they're aligned right and uh, we're basically similarly to what we did in the last step we're going to move the camera around and or move the uh, the tag around and the thing is you can move either it, it's about its relative you know uh, distance and, and orientation uh, rather than whether you should move one or the other. Uh, so likewise, we're going to click here, and that's our first image. And basically, I'm just going to move it around and around. The fact that this checkerboard, by the way, is here, ignore that. Right. As long as it's seeing this, you don't have to have your image completely clear of other things because right now it's only looking for this and it's seeing it. Okay, now notice here that it says camera 101, it's yellow. And that means it's not actually seeing the feed. Um, it, it's, even though this is positioned, it's, uh, it, this has to be green. If it's not, your whole calculation is gonna be thrown off. So on every single one, you wanna make sure it's getting a clean feed. And sometimes that's literally just the way that the light reflects or it's something symbol like that. It might be that it's a little too far, but more typically it's, you know, it's the, uh, it's the lighting. And just moving it around a little bit will help. Okay, that should be plenty. Oh boy, that last one didn't work. See, I wasn't looking and it, I noticed it turned yellow. So I'm just actually going to get rid of that one. And if you saw it before I clicked off of it, there was a bit of a glare on it. Oh, well, there still is on the, on the main screen here. So, yeah, so I'm going to go back to that and click this one. Actually, that should do. That should be plenty. Let's see what happens. So the next set, uh, sorry, step is we're going to click on add to nodal offset here and it snapped it right into position. Now, to test it, uh, what we can do, move back and forth, move around. Now, the fact that it's not there as I'm moving, well, again, that's the tracking delay. That's the amount of time it takes for the tracking information to get into the computer versus how long it takes for the video signal to get into the computer. The video signal obviously takes a lot more time as it gets processed. Uh, but we can see it, it's good nodal um, offset and you can use this transparency to see that it's in the same position. I think compare lets you put a wipe across it. So those are handy little things to have uh, to make sure this all works. But um, Here's what my nodal offset is, and I know from experience that this is very approximately what it always is. Um, and uh, again, we had to have had this distortion information before that works. Otherwise, it'll just be wrong. So now we're gonna go back to settings. We're gonna go to export, export, and then here, um, let's put it in the root here, but uh, you can either save it as an Unreal Engine file uh, lens, lens file, <laughs> or an Xymmetry lens file, which would be an XML. But I will save it as that. And then I can also go back here and I can say save project and just give it a some name. And I could load that later. Uh, that's pretty much it. So hopefully that helps.